The first time I saw Dirk, you know, was in uh, when he played with his uh, youngsters team, and I saw a tall, blonde kid, very skinny, you know, running around back and forth. But the funny thing was, you know, he was trying to find a good position, and everybody else was trying to chase the ball. So that was interesting for me. <laughs> the first time I met Dirk, we were playing in Germany, and I had about 10 NBA players, and he had like 45 points on us. And I went up to him after the game, I says, yo man, who are you? He said, I'm Dirk Nowitzki. You know, from day one, you could tell Dirk was a unique player. You know, a seven foot guy who could run and move, was agile and coordinated. When he came in the league in 1998, there was still a lot of skepticism among our teams about bringing international players onto their roster. To jump from the German first division, which was not one of the most well-regarded leagues in Europe, to the NBA, where just it was a level of physicality. And frankly, he was just going up against men, the likes of which he had never seen. You know, early on, he had his struggles. I didn't speak English very well at the time, but I saw that the kid was determined to not only be the best player in Mavericks history, but to be the best player that he could be. We had some struggles early on that we went through together. You know, we joined a team that was at the bottom of the league. And to support each other, push each other, double down on our work ethic and, and the hours spent in the gym. It, it always boiled down for me looking at him and, and how relentless he was at just getting things done. He became, you know, the winner, the closer, the clutch player, the master. And, and he set a tone and he, he set an expectation for, for what this organization strives to be year in and year out. Dirk's work ethic was elite of the elitists. And some of his tactics were quirky, like some of his techniques, some of the routines that he had. You'd be like, why is he frog jumping the full length of the court continuously? Like, who does that at seven feet? And it looks like it hurts. <laughs> Dirk changed the game with how lethal his three-point shot was for a guy that's seven feet tall. Transition threes, spot up threes, fade away threes. He really changed the game for how he could dominate the game from behind the three point line. He always played hurt. He, he oftentimes played injured. The surgeries, there was one night when he had an opposing player's tooth dislodged in his elbow, but he's a player that left every last ounce of everything he had on the floor. And I don't know of another NBA player that I've ever run across in my almost 40 years in this league that gave so much to so many and asked for such little in return. When the Mavericks won the NBA championship for Dirk, I felt that was a moment of validation for him. Especially after losing the championship final, you know, in 2006. Could see at the end of the game, before the game was really over, he jumped over the table, he had to be by himself. What I can understand really very well. After winning the MVP, that he got the Teammate of the Year award, you know. And that is something special for me because he picked as a young boy, you know, to be a team player and his individual stuff was second. Through our successes, he always gave credit to his teammates, and through our failures and defeats, um, he always took the uh, criticism and the blame head on, and I think that's the, the true definition of a leader and the true definition of Dirk. You know, as great as a basketball player as Dirk is, he's a better human being. He loves camaraderie, he loves fellowship. He, uh, those are, you know, he always says, Let, come over here, let's fellowship. When I meet young international players now, particularly being involved with the Mavericks and, and people know my role with the Mavericks, they consistently have questions about Dirk. For the international players in the 90s, it was a lot of be like Mike. The following decade, the international players looked up to Dirk and it was for a certain period of time, be like Dirk. Everybody that saw me uh, from my country asked me how he's playing with Dirk, being with Dirk, and I was just <laughs> unbelievable. Well, off the court, Dirk is, believe it or not, he's a comedian. Uh, well, I take that back. He thinks he's a comedian. He, he loves to dish it out, but he can take it. And um, he, he's, uh, he's just a really special person. He's just been a, a global 
a global ambassador, you know, for the game. Uh, but more so, he's done so many things for the city of Dallas. No. And he just continues to give back. The things that he did uh, for this organization and for this community um, are quite a legacy. I mean, following Dirk Tuba is, is going to be really hard, you know. I got a long, long way to go. Just one of the most storied careers to play all 21 years with the Mavs and to bring them a championship is its just like there's no way you would have thought that when we were going to the Landry Center every night to try to get better. Dirk, I just want to tell you, from me to you, you're truly a brother, you're truly a friend. And congratulations from my family to yours. You are simply the best, my brother. Simply the best. I think that reasonable fans can disagree on, on what your greatest accomplishment was. 30,000 points, 14 All-Star games. NBA MVP, NBA champion. A day named after you, a key to the city, a street named after you. I mean, it's kind of getting a little bit over the top. Like, is there a point where you just say, okay, thanks a lot, and just shut up and move to the side a little bit? But I think your greatest accomplishment is that you did all of that uh, and you never changed who you were. First part, well done. No? Keep learning, open-minded. And uh, no. <laughs> giving up is not an option. 41 forever. 41 forever. 41 forever. 41 forever. 41 forever. 41 forever.